Hey everybody, my name is Ben Briard, and today I want to talk to you guys about uh, steps and how to migrate an existing uh, Fedora system to using Fedora Bootsy. Uh, I'm a product manager here at Red Hat. In fact, I work on this technology, and so I wanted to put my money where my mouth is and take the, the my whole media collection that runs on on a Fedora box and my my NAS, if you will. Uh, and move that over. And so I'll take you through the process of how it went. So if you're not familiar with Bootsy or just the whole concept of bootable containers, uh, here's a link that will take you to it. The whole idea though is as more applications are containerized and we have a standard set of tools and infrastructure and skill sets around containers, we can apply all of that to managing operating systems. And so uh, this is really, Bootsy is kind of the magic glue that goes in between uh, container technologies and actually uh, the Linux layers of the operating system. Well, Linux is the operating system, but you know what I mean? Bootsy is actually the, the glue that kind of brings these two worlds together. Um, and so if we think back historically about how, how uh, Linux systems were managed, um, you know, we basically have uh, you know, package-based distributions and in the Fedora world, obviously we use uh, RPMs and you know, package managers, DNF. Um, other distributions have you know, other flavors, but this is, you know, we'll keep this Fedora specific. And basically these things are pretty tightly coupled. Sure, some languages have their own, uh, their own package managers, but as a, as a whole, as a distribution, you do it all at a package level. And this works great. Um, but, you know, as you upgrade the system, inevitably you kind of build up this cruft over time. And at some point, you'll need to reinstall and kind of start all over. And it just, over time, kind of becomes challenging. So, for the past decade, we've kind of decoupled applications from the underlying operating system. And this is where containers come in and why they're so profound. And it's really just a, an image, a, you know, a collection of all the dependencies that you need to run your applications. And, and this has just exploded and taken off in ways that we never could have predicted. And, and it's great because people who own those layers can manage them, deploy them at a separate uh, cadence as the underlying you know, system. We have less dependencies between the two. It's really, really fantastic. And this, of course, has let us made uh, several flavors of immutable operating systems. If you've ever you know, go back to the Atomic days or CoreOS, what we've done with Silverblue on the whole Atomic uh, desktop space in Fedora. Now looking forward to like things like uh, U Universal Blue or Ublue, uh, Bluefin, whatever it's called now. Uh, there's a bunch of fla flavors here. And then where we're taking this, uh, with what we want to talk about here, uh, is really using the same uh, container technology that we package and ship and deploy applications with and doing the same for the operating system. And I gotta go back and correct myself because this because uh, uh, Universal Blue or Bluefin is doing this right now. Uh, so anyway, this is this is like where we're going and this is, a, you know, a couple months ago we uh, announced image mode for RHEL uh, on the the Red Hat side of the fence, and the same type of container image, uh, Bootsy images and everything are both available for Fedora as well as CentOS. And so uh, this, here, here's a little bit of what that looks like. Uh, it's the same container file, same Docker file uh, format that we're used to, right? You get from uh, this base image, install the software, copy in my files, set some configuration, that's really it. That builds an operating system image when you do it. In our case, Podman is really what we use. So Podman build, boom, you've got an OS image. Now, the next thing is like, okay, great. I understand a container image. It's a tar file with a bunch of metadata. Uh, how the bleep do you boot this thing? Well, there's, there's kind of, this is like the big thing people have to kind of wrap their head around. Container image, right? There's no concept of partitioning or disks, right? It's just it's just the, the OS file system itself. Um, and so we can kickstart a system. Kickstart will set up all the disks. It will grab the container uh, image from a repository, lay that down on top of the disk, how you set it up. And then we can do uh, some things like uh, inject users, SSH keys, execute post scripts, these types of things. 
think, think about like the stuff you would do in cloud init for cloud image we could do with kickstart right that's a good way to think about it now we also have bootsy image builder that will uh, kind of convert the container image into a, a disk image a vm image uh, whatever type of platform you want there are also config files that can inject users and keys as well you may want to use cloud init on these images um, and then finally, there's a last model, which is Bootsy install, where if you have a self-contained container, so I put all my users on, there's no, like anything that would be considered machine specific is already in that container image. And then we can just use it to install itself. Um, that's a big long command, Podman. I should have copied it on the slide. I did not, sorry about that. Uh, it's in the docs. Okay, so title of the presentation was about migrating the server. So let's get into, here's here's the goal. This is very self-serving. Uh, this is uh, what's in my closet. Fairly recent hardware on this little NAS. I've got 20 terabytes of usable storage. I've got all my apps that are of course containerized. What is it, 2024, so of course. Um, it's all done with Quadlet. They all auto update. Everything is behind a caddy reverse proxy on that. It handles TLS for me and you know I manage it with SSH cockpit, it's all detail on the blog if you want to read about it. But the operating system was just a regular Fedora install. And since everything is running as containers, the box is my register, my container registry. Um, I can actually do the whole process and manage the whole system that way too. So uh, obviously since, you know, it involves in technology, I totally want to use it here too because it's a perfect use case. So here's how, here's how I did it. Uh, step one. Uh, I had to go through and find out what are the packages that we care about on this box. So RPM QA, uh, I like to sort them so they're alphabetical. And I just went through and grabbed all the packages I care about. Now, if, you, if you're going through a migration, you don't actually have to sit there and say, I need a kernel, I need firmware, I need systemd, all that stuff's in the base image. So don't overthink that. Just think about like the components that were added or that are significant that are gonna pull in the dependencies, right? So you don't have to analyze it too deep. You can get a pretty good idea from this slide um, what I was pulling in. Um, yeah, and and then, you know, I just uh, set some uh, unit files and enabled them to run on boot. And then I made uh, directories just for the, the mounts for all the data uh, drives that I'm gonna uh, pull in on the server. Now, next thing, hugely critical, uh, is grab, I, I just, I had a bunch of config files in Etsy. This is where every single one of my applications, um, you know, that, that quadlet file for Podman lives here. Uh, a number of environment files, uh, you know, host name. Uh, I grabbed uh, all the network manager configs because I do, I do bond nix on this box. I have a couple custom unit files and all this kind of stuff, right? Just go scrape Etsy and pull out the important stuff. And then we'll just copy that into our container images. Now, uh, at first I was going to make a, kind of that third column on the install uh, slide. I was gonna use Bootsy install and just put it down on top of, on top of the system. Uh, there are limitations with doing that on top of LVM partitions right now. So I, decided to switch gears after starting this. And uh, this is the kickstart I tried to use. And my goal here was only touch the boot disk that the system is on. And I thought if I could just keep var, you know, not really partition anything, just splat the files down on top of it, that would be great. Did not end up working. So um, this was what I did instead. Um, by the way, the, uh, the ignore disk use only was amazing for preserving volume on all the ones that I really cared about. And frankly, I was, I was a little nervous about losing, uh, losing data or just, you know, making a mistake, that type of thing. Um, the bootloader line is easy to append, uh, options. And you can see, I just laid out, uh, you know, one big file system, and then I just grabbed my image, set up a couple users and pass for SSH keys and boom. Uh, now I do have a lot of mounts on this box. 
So, uh, you know, use etcfs tab to define your mounts, and then system D will scrape that and or will, has a generator that will convert that to mount unit files. Um, so my plan was to actually go grab the, you know, the, the mount units and just use that on the on the new box. Uh, I didn't actually do that, uh, but I'll I'll get to that part later. But I, I originally thought that was that was what I was going to do. <laughs> Maybe I should update slides. Uh, anyway, uh, last thing. I, so I have all these Podman containers. A lot of the volumes that get mounted in the containers are actually like different data drives and file systems and stuff. Um, but I do have a handful of volumes that are in that root drive under under varlib containers on the system, and I. Yeah, you know, basically, uh, I'd never used Podman volume export before. It's so easy. Basically, you just get a tarball, um, and then you can just import it right back in on the new system. It makes migrations so painless. Um, in fact, I did the other thing you're not supposed to do, and I Googled and found a script somebody wrote that just loops through all the volumes. Uh, you get, a, you know, you get the tar files, and then it makes a, a a big tarball of all of them with today's date. It's linked here if you want it. Um, I, it worked great for me. Your mileage may vary. Again, just running scripts off the internet, maybe not the best idea, but uh, it worked great here. Okay, uh, and then of course, if, if you're gonna migrate an important system with important data on it, like this one's really important to me, uh, you should test it first. So I have another bare metal box where uh, I did a couple of attempts there just to make sure everything was good before you we went through it. Okay, so last night I, flip the system and here's what went right. So no data loss, uh, everything worked as expected, it was great. I was nervous about that and uh, I guess I didn't need to be. Uh, so uh, all the container apps came back on, they're all perfect running, like anybody using one of the apps on this server would have no idea <clears throat> anything happened to it. Um, so ultimately I probably should have put this bullet first, but. This was much easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, I did use Bootsy Switch to change. I did the install from Quay, and then I moved it back to the local registry after it came up. And just switching that from the different containers and starting the upgrade cycle, all of that works just beautifully as expected. Um, yeah, and then uh, so for the etcfs tab, what I did was I I took the old one and named it etcfs or fs tab old. And I just grabbed all the lines except for the you know the new boot, the root directory, and just put them on on the one on the new server and mount minus a, boom, everything comes up, great. So that was super easy. So what didn't go as right? Um, it took me about eight times going through the Kickstart just because uh, I I made typos, right? Like uh, it was all pretty minor stuff. Um, on the typo side. The other thing, I did have some challenges with partitioning. I mean, I showed you how I tried to preserve everything at first. So I did have to, you know, after that failed once, I was like, eh, I don't want to put, spend too much time trying to make that work uh, when it's not ideal for certain reasons. So um, I hit one issue where I got the, the install were great, but I found having a separate var partition uh, led to complexities. I was getting errors on unit files. So we have an issue open on that. We'll figure it out. Um, so for the time being, I just want, you know, one root logical volume. If I just tried to grow that one volume to the full terabyte uh, boot volume, uh, I got another uh, error message in Anaconda. So I had to set a fixed size of like 800 gigs and that's fine. It works great. So I don't, that's fine, sufficient for now, um, but that was one issue. Uh, once the box is running, um, there is an SE Linux issue we have with Cockpit. We got it filed. Uh, it's probably a known cause. Uh, basically, I just have to set and forth zero. You can use Cockpit, you know, turn it back on when I'm done. And so we'll figure that out. It's not not a, uh, not a blocker. Um, I, I, what I, what else I screwed up? I've totally forgot about firewall rules. There should have been a section in this about, you know, grabbing those. So I had to redo that. It wasn't too bad, but I do have a couple of complex rules that I had to, had to go, go reinvent. Um, 
first thing I did on the box was try to vim a file. I was like, oh crap, I don't have vim. So I had to go, you know, second update. First thing was add vim enhanced on the, <laughs> on the system. And then I failed to get the cockpit. I forgot you have to set up a reverse proxy or um, my setup has everything behind a reverse proxy and there's a, there is a config file for cockpit that I totally forgot to scrape. So just make sure when you're going through Etsy on moving any systems that you just, you know, dot your I's, cross your T's. Uh, here's just a quick screenshot. I, I think logging in is kind of lame right now. There's not much happening on the box, but just so you can see, this is what the system looks like. Um, okay, so now that we've moved my box, it's all built on a container. That container was deployed via Kickstart. Now what? Um, <clears throat> updates are in my control. So whenever I build a new image and push it to a registry, uh, the system has a timer that will automatically go and grab that update and apply it. If there's not an update in the registry, nothing happens. So what I'm probably gonna do is change that apply updates timer and schedule that to run at like know, two or 3 a.m., something like that. And then if I have a new update, uh, it will apply it. And I'm probably gonna have uh, another systemd timer that will do a new build I'll, I'll probably do a weekly and have it boot on the weekends and it'll just cycle through. Now I'm totally comfortable doing that because if there is a problem and one of these goes bad, I can roll back to the previous. Uh, so I think this is really, really great model. Again, this is what I'm doing for all the applications on the system. So this actually feels really great. Um, so lessons learned, by the way, there's a screenshot of a little home portal everybody's got to put their sprinkler system and 3d printer on their network right um lessons <laughs> learned um i think right now um pick your installation path like you probably know the environments you're targeting pick that because it will influence kind of some of the stuff that goes into your container image um i spent some cycles thinking about making users and injecting keys and doing all this stuff into the container image that i probably didn't need to do since it was just going to kick kickstart the system. Um, so definitely that's that's my advice right now. Uh, also the docs are really, really good. Um, so take a look, the team put a lot of work and cycles into this. So really like any part of the OS that you have a question about or aren't sure, um, there's probably a section in the docs on that. Um, so ultimately like it wasn't so bad, it was pretty easy. Um, I will say though, I think uh, an interactive installer probably would have made this go faster. Like since it's a one-off system, like the value of putting a bunch of time into a Kickstarter is probably diminished. If I was gonna deploy, you know, more than one of these, it would be well worth it, right? Um, so it would it'd be, it'd be nice. We need to get to where we have an interactive installer, I think. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I kind of already covered the last one. Um, so that's it. Uh, so yeah, if you do have a system that you wanna migrate, um, I found it, um, I found it pretty easy. Uh, I think one, again, some of the big things that actually made that easy though, was everything was already containerized on my box. So that's a, that's a huge uh, advantage right there. But um, many other systems, use cases, applications and so forth uh, will work well in this, um, using these Bootsy images. So definitely uh, encourage you to check it out. Thanks for listening to me ramble on and on about this. Um, but we've got, you know, here are some discussion links. We do have a matrix room. There are images uh, for Fedora, CentOS. I didn't link the rel one on there, but you can Google it and find it. Um, uh, pro uh, other, some of the other projects, uh, Podman Desktop has really great plugins uh, in terms, uh, they, obviously you can build containers in it, but you can do this on any operating system. So you have Mac, Windows, and then there's another Boot C plugin that will take those container images and convert them to disk images for you. So again, it's super handy, especially if you're on a non-Linux uh, system or a corporate one. And then of course, Project Bluefin, this is what I'm running on my daily driver right now. It's fantastic. And uh, again, they have a whole container workflow that actually builds and pushes the updates and stuff. And it, it's awesome. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this was useful and interesting. Cheers.